Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of September 9th. This week, the activity has been dominated by some regions on the east limb, most notably region 2157. Boom, right there, there's a big M-class flare, and it's spitting off multiple C-class flares as well as solar storms. And as these, this region and the set of regions around it rotate further into the Earth strike zone, we might start seeing some solar storms that are Earth-directed. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see there was that big M-class flare right there. And since then, we've seen a lot of flares popping off, but just below that M-flare threat level. Now, in addition to flares, we also did get a solar storm blow through last week from that filament eruption. But as you can't really tell from the disturbance index, it was quite below storm levels. But it ended up being kind of a one-two punch. We had a mini solar storm in front, and then the big one hit later. So it gave us about two and a half days of really good disturbed wind that brought us aurora as low as Wisconsin. But the best show was in Canada, in the Northwest Territories, and also over the Yukon. Now, returning to what's going on right now, we do still have enhanced radiation levels. You can see them here at the poles, but we stay underneath NOAA's S1 uh, threat alert for a radiation storm. We just kind of skirted the edges, but that should be dying down here in the next few days. Returning to those solar storms, this is Enlil. It's NASA's version of our prediction model. You can see the latest solar storm is blowing off to the east, but that was from region 2157. I'm not expecting any effects from this. If we were, it might be on, late on the 10th, but as that region begins to rotate into the Earth's strike zone, we're getting closer and closer to getting hit by these storms. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is stereo, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's stereo B staring at the sun from behind. And you can see there's quite a bit of activity, especially from regions 2146 and 48. You see that big eruption right there? That should be returning to us in about four days. So we do have some backside stuff to look forward to. Switching to synoptic charts that show all of the active regions all over the sun, the two vertical lines mark the east and west limbs and they bracket the Earth field of view. Now when we've shut, set these charts in motion, you can see there's going to be a lot of active regions that are going to be rotating onto the east limb. The sun is literally going to be peppered by them in a few days, so there's a possibility of an uptick in activity this week. Returning to the disk, you can see regions 2152 and 53 are now rotating off to the west limb, but the real players that are entering the game are 2157, 58, and 59 at the moment. And because they're clustered so closely together, 2157 and 59 have a lot of synergy going on, and they are firing off solar storms like you wouldn't believe. And these things are now just beginning to rotate into the Earth strike zone, so we may see a lot more activity from them in the coming week. Turning to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the next week, we are still coming down out of that solar storm, so conditions are rather unsettled, and we will uh, anticipate hitting a slight high-speed stream uh, around the 10th, plus there may be a little bit from that other solar storm that's missing us off to the east. So NOAA has kept the possibility for a minor storm at high latitudes to about 20 to 25 percent, and down at mid-latitudes for about 10 to 15 percent for possibility for active conditions, and things should settle down uh, near the end of the week. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the next week, NOAA has upped our M-class flare risk to 75% with an X-class flare risk of 30%, and that should persist through the entire week as 2157 continues to be the dominant player. Regarding radiation storms, recall we are still heading in elevated radiation levels, uh, and that should persist for a less, at least two or three days uh, when returning close to normal uh, at the end of the week. But we still have an elevated risk for new storms uh, as these regions continue to rotate onto the disk. So this week has us on the edge of our seat as we watch these regions rotate into the Earth strike zone, because if they let off a solar storm there, it will be Earth-directed. But meanwhile, everything is pretty peaceful. We have a little bit of unsettled conditions, which should give us some light aurora possibilities at high latitudes. But outside of that, your GPS and your uh, satellite internet and phone services should have no problems over this coming week. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.